Hey guys, uh, recently a friend of mine asked me to go and speak to some kids at the library that she works at. They were doing some kind of alternative career path showcase to show the kids that there are a lot of different ways to make money when they grow up. And you know, I have kind of an alternative career, I guess. I mean, it's an alternative to good. It's an alternative to a good career path. So uh, I did this presentation where I made them this video on how an episode of Brain Dump is made so that they could kind of understand my process. Normally, I would have put this video up on my Patreon, but my Patreon supporters already know how Brain Dump is made because they've seen me talk about it before. So I decided to put it up here publicly for everybody on YouTube. So step one to making a Brain Dump episode would be uh, writing it and voice acting it. But after that, then we move into the animation phase. So right now I'm working in Autodesk Maya and I have my character set up here. I'm just kind of keyframing this character pose to pose, just kind of like laying out all the gestures that he makes. And I'm also making sure that his eyes are always pointed in the appropriate direction, just so it kind of looks like he's always looking at what he's doing. So just kind of here, I'm like sweeping this computer off of this table and then I'm leaning over and grabbing this box. After I have all the movement laid out and it's looking kind of good and I think it's uh, pretty ready I run a batch render when you batch render in Maya you are left with kind of like a series of image files uh, PNG image files and each one of these won't be a single frame of the animation. I basically only really need a frame when the character moves. So basically we're gonna open Adobe Animate now and we're going to kind of jumble it together into somewhat of a slideshow, I guess you would call it. Okay, so this here is basically like the boring part. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm dragging each individual image file into Adobe Animate and kind of making sure that they line up right when put in context with the uh, audio file at the top of the timeline there. So like I said, this is less animation and more slideshow. That's what I call this this process that I've developed. I call it slideshow animation. Whereas with normal 3D animation, each uh, individual frame would be rendered out individually. I only render out one frame when a character moves and then I only change to the next frame when it's necessary in the cartoon. Right now you can't see the folder that has all of the image files in it because I have two monitors and it's on the other monitor, but I'm just like one by one, I'm dragging each and every frame in here and kind of setting it up. So next up I have the kind of ancillary features that exist on top of the image that I put uh, on a layer above it. So I have things here like the eyebrows and the character's mouth and I just kind of plop those on top. I I have them all pre-made and I recycle them from episode to episode. Sometimes I add like eyelids for just a single frame, which I have if I don't wanna like render out an entire image just when a character is blinking. I'll just throw in some eyelids on top of it. And even beyond the eyebrows and the mouth, there are more details that are added during this stage than you might expect. Like right here, I'm adding just a, a piece of paper that the character is holding. And uh, this is much easier to do in 2D. If that piece of paper were to actually be modeled and kind of connected to my hand when I was still in Maya, just so I could render it out, that would probably be more complicated than I care to figure out. I'm not quite sure how I would rig that off the top of my head and I could look it up and spend like a week figuring it out, but it's just, it's so much easier to just draw it and then put it on top. A lot of the time on Brain Dump, if I'm holding something like a pencil or whatever, that pencil actually isn't really there. It's just part of the 2D image. It's not something that was modeled and exists in the 3D space. I just think this way is way easier and people don't really notice. So my policy is if there's something that can be done in 2D, it usually will be because that's easier. Speaking of 2D, next up we animate Goofball. He's the ghost character on Brain Dump, a completely 2D character. He is not modeled in 3D whatsoever. Uh, there is kind of like an object I wouldn't even call it a model, a character model. It's really just a, a vague shape that I use in Maya and I use it to just kind of block out his basic position so that when I'm setting up the composition of the shots, I know where he is and I know, I know where to have my character look to see him. So I'm kind of looking him in the eyes and that helps me, but it's not rendered. Goofball is just entirely 2D. He is a completely flat character that is done entirely in Adobe Animate. That is the only place where he lives. I have a lot of reusable body parts for Goofball, but you can see right here, I'm drawing uh, kind of like a new hand shape. Once in a while, you gotta draw something new just so uh, the action lines up to whatever it is that he's saying. And now we're lip syncing. This part's kind of a grind if I'm being honest. I don't think anybody has a lot of fun doing this. Uh, Adobe Animate has a new kind of 
a frame picker tool that makes it a lot easier. And I just kind of try to pick the appropriate mouth shape for whatever sound is coming out in that moment. And they're all reusable, so they carry over from episode to episode. The entire idea behind Brain Dump is that the show is animated for efficiency. It is uh, made to be done so I can get the episode out quick after I record and write it. So any time that I have anything that can be reused, it probably will be reused and saved for later. And afterwards, I also have to do lip sync for Goofball as well. So right around here is when I usually bang that out. Next, I composite the different levels of animation on top of each other. So I'm on my layer and my eyebrows are on a layer and my mouth is on a layer and then Goofball exists in another file entirely. He's not even in the same file. So I take all of my layers and smash them down into a single SWF and then I do the same thing for Goofball and then I take Goofball's SWF and layer it over my SWF in Adobe After Effects. And this is also where I make Goofball look like he's kind of translucent and wiggly and glowing and kind of make it look like he's floating around lightly, like he's underwater almost. After Effects is where I add all of the stuff that maybe might not necessarily be considered animation, but is more like a special effect. Like if you see smoke or an explosion or something like that, that's usually done in After Effects for me. And then after this, all I have to do is a final edit in Adobe Premiere, and that's when I add music and sound effects, basically working on what will eventually become the final version of the video. But before we see that final product, I got a couple of plugs for you guys. What do you think about these goofball stickers? Well, guess what? If you want them, you can get them. And not only that, 100% of all profits are going to Smile Train. That's an organization that funds cleft palate surgeries for kids born in impoverished countries. Look, I put one on my fridge. I put one on my air purifier. Yeah, I got an air purifier, so what? So if you want to get these stickers and if you want to support a good cause and help some kids out, check that out below. This video was also brought to you by Audible. Now if you're like me, you're always on the lookout for something to listen to while you're working so you don't have to just sit there in abject silence. Let me tell you, Audible is absolutely perfect for that. For a limited time, you can get three months of service for just $6.95 a month. That's a pretty good deal. And when you sign up, you get a free audiobook and two free Audible originals. Just visit audible.com slash goofball or text goofball to 500, 500 Now I know a lot of you saw The Disaster Artist with James Franco when that came out a couple years ago, but let me tell you, the book it's based on? Infinitely more interesting and entertaining. By a wide margin, it is so much better. It's Greg Sestero's unfabricated first-hand account of being in the room, and it's even narrated by Sestero himself. And let me tell you, he does a great impression of Tommy Wiseau, so you gotta listen to the audiobook for that. You can't just read it. And remember, when you sign up, you get a free audiobook and two free Audible originals. Once again, visit audible.com slash goofball or text goofball to 500, 500 And lastly, if you guys like Brain Dump, you want to support the show, you want to see it continue, please consider checking out my Patreon with the link in the description below. There aren't a lot of tiers. You just pay five bucks and you get access to everything. Behind the scenes stuff, tutorials, source files, After Effects plugins, lots of cool stuff on there. So please consider checking it out and giving that a look. You know, you got a package from Burnbot. I did? Why the heck am I sitting here playing video games on the internet like an asshole? You know, this Burnbot thing's been going on for so long that frankly, I've begun to forget that it was even happening. I've been sick. That's what you said last time. Well, I'm always sick. It sucks. Thanks for reminding me. Holy shit. She went back to India. Dear Max, I've returned to Mumbai to gain a better understanding of my mysterious origins. I won't get into it now, but I can assure you that my adventures have been highly interesting and have entailed many shocking and life-changing revelatory moments. I hope you can forgive me for departing Brain Dump with no prior notice, but I simply saw it in my best interest to discontinue working with a man who has so little respect for me. Oof. Oof. Big oof. That's a big oof right there. As a show of good sportsmanship, I've sent you some authentic Indian literature. Gaul. Tumblr's not gonna like this. <sighs> What's wrong, creep? You sound like you got something on your mind. The only thing on my mind, goofball, is a thin layer of cerebrospinal fluid that cushions my brain against the interior wall of my skull. Gross. But hey, that package has a return address. Now that we know where she is, we can contact her and you can finally apologize. Ugh, I hate that word. 
But I miss Burnbot. And I really miss having a dang TV! I still don't know how Game of Thrones ended. Well, however it ended, I'm sure it was great and everybody loved it. A man can't live without his TV, goofball. Maybe it's time we just got a new one. Well, if you want, but you'll never be able to find another TV like Burnbot. People are getting sick of the story arc, goofball. We gotta wrap it up! Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta go wash your disgusting ghost words off my face. Don't forget to use soap! Oh, goofball, will you knock it off?